Hello family, this is Lynn. This is More Holistic. How are you doing today? Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to my new subscribers. Give me a thumbs up, comment, share, share, share. And more holistic means the whole, whole, complete mind, body, soul. In harmony, in balance with divine law, the great mother Amanit, <clears throat> who created everything from her and Amun, her the masculine principle. <coughs> so, what are we going to talk about today? So, what I'm going to talk about today, are you eating a colonized diet? Highly melanated, highly pigmented, people with tightly coiled hair, better known sometimes as black, <laughs> African, um, came to the New World, and was forced to come to the New World, many were, some were already here, but we're going to talk about the plantation life, uh, soul food. Soul food comes from the enslaved forced labor camps, or basically concentration camps of the so-called South, right? And what they were given was discarded, cast off garbage, like pig feet, tails, snouts, chip urns, ham hawks, oxtails, okay? These were the leftovers, the uh, elite class, those that lived in the big house, as you can say, um, the master class, the uh, elites, the bourgeoisie, they ate the best parts of the animal flesh. They get the gorge on that. So they gave my ancestors the scraps. And being that they were so creative, so intelligent, so great masters of creativity, they made something out of nothing, which we always do, okay? Now that's the composition, what you call quote unquote, Southern food, all right? And also they had uh, things like greens, mustard greens, collard greens, dandelions. These were considered weeds and um, discarded and scoffed. But these are the most nutritious foods that you can eat. They have all the natural vitamins and minerals that the body needs as far as greens. You can juice some, eat them in salads, saute them. Try not to cook them too much, but uh, yeah. So I would define soul food as trauma food also because you're in a trapped, imprisoned, confined space and you're forced at gunpoint, at whip, to do forced labor against your will for free to make others wealth to build the foundation of their so-called freedom because uh slavery was their em em emblem 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 of freedom for the settler colonialists the invaders the genocidal people who stole the land from the indigenous people that lived here in the first place <laughs> so the spaniards what they did they brought in things like cows and pigs Cows, what you call span, I mean, call a beef. Pigs, what you call pork and wheat. And as we find out now today, a lot of these, uh, this stuff is uh, very high in fat and not of our natural diet to eat. It causes all kinds of complications. Like the meats we know cause the, the big four heart attack, you know, uh, heart problems, cancer, oh, uh, obesity, and high blood pressure. And plus, when they did this, they took away the uh, original indigenous first world farming techniques and put in their own, which are very destructive, which is mono, mono culture, mono plants, just one plant at a time, you know, wears out the soil, causes erosion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now in the new world, the Aboriginal people had the three sisters. They had the corn, the beans, and the squash. And they ate that and plant that and was surviving on it for thousands of years. Everything was intact. Okay. Now we know that what happened to them. They were sent to reservations, uh, you know, wounded knee, um, 
what's that? Ja Andrew Jackson uh, had an extermination plan. And in Texas, uh, Stephen Austin called it exterminate all of the indigenous people. That was his his motto, and of course they named the capital after him, so that tells you what Texas is all about. <laughs> Sam Houston, big slave holder, okay? And Texas had more slaves than anybody, he loved it. That's why you have more black people here in Texas than any other place in America, okay? So that thing, that formed the, the food system here, you know, what we call soul food. Okay? So the, uh, the uh, what we call, excuse me y'all, the settlers, sun is in my eyes. These settlers, the settler colonialists, or we could say the, the invaders, some call them explorers and discoverers. <laughs> uh, y'all need to read the document of discovery. The document of discovery, I'm getting off the path now, but it just popped in my mind. The document of discovery was uh, when the popes, the papal, bull put a stamp on slavery and put a stamp on uh, extermination uh, and taking up the lands of the indigenous people of the new world gave it their stamp of approval saying that they were all savages and the land didn't belong to them anywhere you put your flag it was discovered that's why they have discovery channel discovery this discovery that okay so anyways get back to the subject about these foods now the foods like uh of the kings and queens of europe were the rich meats of all kinds, the dairy, the cheese, the wine. And what happened was that the peasants of Europe, they ate basically oats and barley, and that was looked down upon. And the kings and queens ate all this, you know, uh, fatty foods. And of course, they died early, became obese. Ooh, bugs, 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 bugs. Anyway. <laughs> and so uh, the original African diet consisted of basically plants like your black eyed peas, your um, okra, yams, and you know, green plants, and some animal products, but that was not the main focus of the meal. In some cases, some were vegetarian or vegan. All right. So what, you know, so um, keeping going on here. So, so the trauma food, uh, traumatized food, or the colonized food that we're eating, <clears throat> we were forced at gunpoint and in confinement to eat this garbage. And, uh, you know, and still confined in different areas, like say the urban areas where the practice of food apartheid is practiced, where there's no actual grocery store within a, a one mile radius, I believe. And then uh, they're surrounded by fast food restaurants and convenience stores so you don't get any nutritional food there and and basically uh that's not done by accident it's done intentional and uh deliberately and um yeah deliberate it's deliberate it's not by accident and it's all for profit big profit for a big farm big agriculture big food industry and the result is a sick fat people which will have to use a lot of pharmaceuticals and go to the doctor and everybody's happy because everybody's making money, but the masses are dying. So, so in, anyways, in a nutshell, to deny food access is an act of war. You know, when you're trapped and surrounded and conditioned through TV, media, educational system, like the food chart, et cetera, that this food is nutritious when they've known since the 1920s and before that, through research, medical research, that it wasn't, okay, and that it caused all these diseases, but because of the profit of capitalism, and we know capitalism is all about making money, money, money at any cost, you can murder and kill and slave people, you know, the whole, I'll have to go through the whole spill, uh, tear up the environment as long as you're making a profit, and they tell us that's how we're going to get our freedom, is to be entrepreneurs and practice capitalism, so, but you got to exploit somebody. So they're telling us to be black entrepreneurs, but we have to exploit somebody. So who are we going to exploit? You tell me. More likely it's going to be other black people with high priced stuff and little schemes that don't work. Now, I'm not saying that, but you know, uh, high priced items and things. So 
what is the solution you may ask what is the solution so basically i'm also another point i'm trying to make it's not the fault of the people the individuals that they're obese and, and overweight because 80 percent of americans and i think about 75 percent of black people are overweight overweight obese you can see them walking around you at walmarts and all the stores little children are very obese and sick because of this practice of the um, big ag, big food, big uh, pharmaceutical companies pushing all these highly processed, denatured foods on the population in order to have profit. So um, what the solution is, I would say the decolonization of the food, changing your diet to a vegan diet, a plant-based diet. That doesn't mean a junk food vegan. You're going to have to get rid of the salt, the oils and the sugars and eat close to nature as you can eat plant your own garden in the pot or in the backyard buy organic buy from a farmer's market as much organic as you can get it because they say to be organic is only 80 percent of it has to be organic and then we have to fight to change the food system which means actually you would have to dismantle uh, that whole system so what we have to do is to, I think socialism would help because it would uh, give us access to all the organic green beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and nuts. And to redistribution of the wealth so people that are denied access to healthy food would have access to healthy food. And it wouldn't be hoarded by the rich. And by the way, did you know that most of the vegetables and fruits and whatever that come from the farm if they don't sell them at cost, 40% of them are thrown away. If they don't make a profit and you know, they won't put them on sale or give them away to people, they would actually throw them away. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible, terrible, terrible? And on top of that, that doesn't even count the food that's thrown away in the homes and in restaurants. So that's another 44%. So if you add those two together, that'd be about 84% of the food is wasted. And people are hungry and well good nutrition so basically the whole system needs to be dismantled and rearranged and all the wealth needs to be redistributed redistributed to um yeah to the people that do the work all right so what you have to do is free your plate and free your plate from animal products anything with a face no birds on it no cows on it um no, no uh, pigs on it, no goats, no fish, no creepy crawlers, no crawfish, <laughs> no bugs, no crustaceans, none of that. So free your plate and your mind, body, and soul will travel. There's enough for everyone. There's enough resources for everyone. They have just uh, created an artificial shortage. So we all feel, feel fearful, and agitated and in competition and opposition to, other, to each other, which is one of the uh, tactics of divide and rule, divide and conquer that the ruling class bourgeoisie 1% imposes on the entire population. So once again, just to sum it all up, the question uh, and answer all in one, colonialism, capitalism, patriarchy causes the masses of people, 80% of people in the United States to be overweight and have obesity. So black people, highly melanated people, highly pigmented people with tightly coiled hair are confined uh, to urban areas. In the past, it was plantation, uh, slave labor, work camps, uh, concentration camps, and given scraps of food and did the best they could with them. They made them taste good though, they really did. That's why it's hard to get off of because it's very tasty and, and, and uh, uh, addictive. But we have to cut those ties for our health and the health of our children and for the betterment of the animals and the other species so they can have a full life. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So uh, due to their confinement and the exploitation and oppression within and under the white hedge hegemonic <clears throat> white hegemonic settler colonialist um, 
now neo-colonial, imperialistic, capitalistic, patriarchal system, uh, we have been trained, brainwashed, conditioned to accept this format, this playbook, this structure, and say it's normal. This is the way it's supposed to be. This is how we're supposed to eat. This, people will always eat meat. We gotta have our protein. All that's been been indoctrinated and taught to you. And what you must know is that the end goal of the of the capitalist, of the patriarch, is total, complete extermination of highly melanated, highly uh, pigmented people with tightly coiled hair. Extermination. Uh, we might be under the impression that we have houses now and we're not doing so bad and we make <clears throat> 100,000 plus a year and some of us are millionaires and billionaires and we hold high office in, in, in this illegal state uh, and feel pretty comfortable. But that is the frog syndrome. You know what the frog syndrome is? <laughs> it's when uh, a pot of water, cold water is put on the stove and they put the frogs in there and they turn the water on to boil it. And it's just nice and cold for a long time. And the frog is doing pretty good. He's swimming around in there and he's chilling. You know what I'm saying? That's us. We chilling and we're comfortable. Chilling and in in, in water over the hot stove. And it's heating up. And you can see it's heating up all around you right now. Uh, you know, with the, um, we call um, state sanctioned violence from the police. And then we have the imperialistic wars where they go all over the world and cause war and destabilize countries in order to steal the resources and exploit the people for cheap labor, etc. So, there's a bright side. There's hope. Once you become a vegan, a plant-based diet, it helps to cut down on all this exploitation and gives you better health, helps the earth, helps your, your community, your family, and women, black women, since you cook for your family, it will be very important for you to change to a plant-based diet because you're gonna have to take care of your children and your husband or your partner or whatever, and it, it'd be your responsibility. So it's your responsibility to make that change, to be a responsible person and change your diet to a plant-based diet, vegan diet. Well, now there's a difference between a vegan diet and a plant-based diet. A vegan diet is total, you know, no animal products whatsoever, no dairy, no meat, nothing with a face. Plant-based, they eat a lot of, a lot of plants, and everything but every now and then they'll have some meat or some dairy cheese or whatever not too frequent so that's the difference so hopefully we'll go for vegan but if you can't do that at least try to be plant-based but that's it for today that's all i had to say uh so decolonize your mind it starts here in the mind decolonize your mind get it back you know and then you know that will affect you to to, to decolonize your diet Eat your original diet of plants, lots of plants, lots of fruits, lots of fruits, uh, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, uh, seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, sesame seeds. Um, what's the other one? A little bit of nuts, like cashew nuts, almonds, just a little. You don't have to have a, go crazy with the nuts. And uh, get your nutrition together, your exercise, get out there, walk, run, play, swim. Uh, and then, you know, um, also ultimate relaxation, let go of the stress, because stress can cause a lot of diseases. Plus, we're under a lot of stress and trauma from all the violence and uh, what do you call it, um, aggression that we receive every day, like in the media and on your workplace and in your neighborhood. What do they call passive aggressive uh, violence, you know, that type of stuff. You know, with mind games, people eff it with your mind takes a toll on you after a while and then also out to make sure you socialize and get out there and uh, like volunteer join a radical revolutionary group uh, so you could get your political education learn your history because they're not going to teach you that in school that CRT stuff is a bunch of garbage they don't teach black history in schools that's not the fight people just using it as excuse uh, to attack the people they've been attacking for the past 500 years because they do not want us to change our status from the bottom to move to the top because they know they would slide down. If they can't exploit us 
any longer and take advantage of us um, for their own, uh, for profit and for power too. So anyways, that's all I had to say today. More holistic. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I was going to show you my little apple tree house doing. Maybe I will show you. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll show you my um, my new plant. This is basil. Miss Basil. Basil is good for wealth. Mm, you put this in your spaghetti sauce, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. Smells so good. Look at it, how pretty and green it is. Y'all like that? That's basil. Mmm. Mmm, smell good. You can put these in your windowsill out and put them in pots and plants, garden plants. Because I used to have a big garden, but somebody kept tearing my garden up. That's another story I don't want to get into right now. But yeah, that's the basil that's growing here. Uh, let me go ahead and check this apple tree. Y'all want to take a look at it? Okay, let's go look at it real quick. I got to walk on my sore knee, so watch this. It might take me a few minutes. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, wait a minute. I'm getting there. So I'm going to show you my little tree. It's a Dorsey apple tree. Uh, it's doing quite well. Look at it. You see it? Wait a minute. Can you see it? Y'all see it? Wait a minute. Y'all see it? 